Hello folks, so when I'm capturing broadband data, light pollution is more of an issue, so I set up these boards. Now this board helps block some of the light from my neighbor's lamp on the garage. Now this lamp is never turned on because my neighbor next door passed away about a year and a half ago and her daughter left for college and never came back. The house has been abandoned ever since. But this 8 foot tall plywood is blocking an extremely bright lamp right there. So I did capture the Orion Nebula, but I only got in 21 minutes worth of exposure time. And now with the clouds coming for the next week and the moon coming back, I think this is going to be my last chance for the year. But I'm lucky because the Orion Nebula is so bright, maybe 21 minutes will be enough. Now capturing the Orion Nebula is really tricky because it has a really bright core area. And if you run your exposures for too long, you can blow it out. And if you blow it out, that means it becomes all white and you'll never be able to see any detail inside that core. So I stacked all of my data. And when you stack your data, you're not going to be able to see much. It's just going to look like a dark image. But this dark image is actually very revealing. Check this out. This is one way to tell if your Orion Nebula is blown out. If you can actually see these four core stars in the middle that means you're not blown out if you were blown out it would be all white you wouldn't see these four stars you probably wouldn't see this detail around there so keeping my exposures down to five seconds actually did the trick this is really cool to see just in the stacked image okay now let's see what lurks in the darkness i did an automatic stretch in pics and sight and let's see what happened and there it is not only do we see the Orion Nebula that I captured, but we also see Running Man. And Running Man gets its name because it actually looks like a person running. Here's a body. You can see some arms there. You can see some legs there. So I'm actually pretty happy with um, what I'm seeing with only 21 minutes of data and 5 second exposures. So after this, I did a dynamic background extraction to see if I could find even more data. And when I did that, I definitely picked up more data around the nebula. And um, a little bit, I picked up some graininess too. And when, when you don't capture a lot of exposures, your, your picture will definitely be um, a, a lot more grainy. And this is more grainy than, than what I'm used to. And that means when it's more grainy, it means for me at least, it's, it's harder to, to sharpen and get details out of. So uh, that's one of the pluses if you capture lots and lots of data. Even if you don't find any more nebulosity, there's nothing more to be found. At least your picture gets smoother and smoother. Okay, so here is the big unveiling. Here's my final image. So what do you think? I sharpened it a bit. I denoised it a bit. I increased the color, obviously. I worked on the star color. Um, I didn't really pull out the detail and the core like I would have wanted. Uh, but that's okay. I still like it. And I, I think it's a pretty good image for only 21 minutes of data. From that to this. And I did have some fun, by the way. I went back to play around with that core because I knew it wasn't blown out. And um, this, this is what I, I captured. I mean, this is what I processed. Here is a more detailed version with the same data of that core area. You can see those bright stars in the middle. You can see lots of cool details in that core. I thought that was pretty cool and fun to, to play around with, but not something I was going to do for my final image. Although it would have been nice to see a little more detail in the core on that, but I don't want to go back and redo things now. I kind of forgot about that during the, the processing. Oh, I should have spent more time on the core. But I'm pretty good with this as a final image. So um, that's all I got, folks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.